Let the lottery begin. The Great River Sphinx, the heart of Assyrian. Life in both ancient and modern times is embodied in the snake goddess, Wajet, who is said to dwell in the papyrus marshes in the river's delta. Wajet is the patron and protector of Assyrian, and she nourishes the kingdom as the river Sphinx sustains the land and its people. A teacher and giver of wisdom, Wajet is the mother of the Uresis, the race of two-headed winged serpents who are her emissaries and spirits of caution, guidance, and protection. Wajet appears as a woman with the head of a cobra, with winged arms outspread in a protective pose, or a winged cobra with a woman's face, raised and ready to strike in defense of her land and people. A protector of kings, Wajet supports Ra and Horus as deities of rulership, but as the guardian of all Osirian, she works with Kepri to protect the common folk as well. Wajet is a patron of pharaohs and the Oasis, and part of the royal regal of Osirian. Although she has temples in many of Osirian's major cities, countless smaller shrines to Wajet stand along the banks of the River Sphinx. Oracles are particularly common in Wajet's priesthood, and the pharaohs of Osirian have long looked to them for insight and counsel. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Man from Assyrian Mummy's Mask Edition. Not to be confused with The Man from Assyrian Origins Edition, which happens seven to nine years earlier, delving into the backstories and some of the deeper story arcs and reasons of why things are occurring now the way they are. So definitely, by all means, ladies and gentlemen, listen to both podcasts simultaneously for a deeper, richer I didn't need to see Ant-Man to understand what Civil War was all about, but you get the idea. So, welcoming back to the cast after a hiatus. So far, we did not get too many episodes in. Miss Ashley Florence will be playing with us today. Hi. Well, thank you for having me back. Yay. I'm excited. <laughs> so, tell us, tell, us, tell, us a, tell us a little bit. Not, we don't want to get too much into backstory right now, but tell us wh- who you'll be playing today. Uh, I'm going to be playing Kaida, who is... An elven druid who's been just wandering around here with her, you know, her companion, her trusty cougar, Roxy. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what I can find on this adventure. Always interested in what's happening, especially in the world of humans and seeing what's going on. Well, lately, the world of humans has invited everyone down to Osirian, specifically to the city of Wati, to join a lottery that has been put up by the Church of Phrasma to explore a up to this point, a forbidden and walled off necropolis city, which could have history, lore and treasures galore ordered by the Pharaoh Kemet the third himself, the Ruby Prince. You've wandered this way. You've entered the lottery and obviously you're not with our current adventuring party, but she will be making her cameo appearance and a little bit more in the future. Also going around the house, we have trusty and true. We have Matt Witt playing Vex Vandal. And you are a Suli rogue. Now, this is quite quite sick right now. Yeah, he's a little upset. Now, this particular Suli we're going to get into has a affinity for certain elements, all elements, or just one in particular? Just one element. And what element like would that be? Electricity. That's very interesting. A little bit of electricity in a non-technical world. Why? That might attract the wrong attention, but if you've listened to three episodes so far, I think you know where I'm going with this. Also, a staple cast member and rollmonger, Mr. Aiden Willems is in the house doing his reverse cameo of... Fafal Vaish. Fafal Vaish under the same name, but a slightly different character class. But that a little bit more will be revealed about his presence here in the past and a couple years in the future in our Dice Before Dishonor All Cavalier podcast. 
No, it's not that he doesn't have any other characters. And no, it's not that he just only had that ready. There are reasons why this man is in both and is playing different character classes. And you'll just have to listen and find out why. And of course, the show is based around... Another one of our cast and fan favorites, Mr. Frank Hamilton playing the character that won him his audition a couple years ago. Mr. Frank Hamilton playing who today? Uh, I'll be playing Arif today. So, yeah, just a straight Kellish human uh, cleric of uh, no, no real power, but just knows a little bit about everything. You're also taking the archetype cloistered cleric, and you're a phrasma, and that gives you a little bit more in your your knowledge skills and everything open right up, and sacrifices combat spells. What do you have to give up for that? Uh, it, it gives up spell casting, so yeah, I have fewer oh. spells but more skill points. Not spell casting completely, but no, no, I think I'd get uh, one less spell per level than a than a standard cleric. Do you have and to one give less up? domain. Domain, yeah, okay, I remember now. One of the, one of the domains, um, Miss Ashley Parasquello. Uh, her cameo is just about up, as well as Ryan Messina just became a daddy. And because he is a main staple to our subplot and not the main plot, he will be carried over when the subplot, you know, pops up. And that is why, particularly today, he's not about, as you will see, he's sort of the NPC aggressor today, as opposed to just a player character. But we promise you a rotating cast. We promise you a dynamic cast. And these people will be in and out, hopefully not in a confusing sense. Hopefully you'd like to follow the main storyline. As seen through a semi-NBC outsider, Frank Hamilton's old man Arif, following the adventures of Vex Vandal, the interference of Fafal and others. So, when last we left, a confrontation, a strange energy electrical possible magnetic in nature being charged on a magical shield part of the armor that's a little bit too perfect for wear of r3n known as rin the reclamation android just a pale human they think he is a paladin we've hinted at well it doesn't seem very doing very very nice things right now but you know what lawful good does not mean lawful nice the guy is here with his own mission to get stuff done and he finally, legally, I might add, the lawful part, gained access through the proper channels to get into the gate. Perhaps he's duped his party a little bit, didn't share his main objective, climbed up and accidentally defaced the spire of Phrasma. Now this, of course, pissed off our paladin. Why are you putting holes in this 1,200-year-old monument? A little confrontation. He comes down after reading a device that makes staticky, crackly noises. And now he seems to be more interested in the very ill and vomiting vexed vandal, the Suli rogue, planting his face. Being attended, it's not like a man down that we just ignore him. Fafal is giving what little medical aid he can. Suddenly Rin appears around the corner, tower shield out at the ready. In the center of his shield, there isn't a gem. It's just sort of like a, a bulbous disc, but it's glowing. And the glow is rapidly getting brighter and spreading over the shield in a mathematical looking archaic pattern and this thing is revving up really quickly and he's coming right at us holding it up and in the other hand he has that box which for fall you see the first time he's holding a box in his hand and it's making an angry buzzing noise and it's getting louder and much louder as he approaches and his eyes are fixed on vex uh acolyte we might have a problem uh, i draw my sword okay he stops at a distance, like he just comes around the corner, right? And just, just stops when you draw your sword and just looks at you and shakes his head no. And it's not a no, like, don't fight me. It's kind of a, kind of a sense motive. Remember, we we're talking about how you read his, his subtlety? 21. But fall, that's the look of a man who's downed a deer, but didn't get the swift kill and comes over and in remorse, ends its life and ends its suffering and feels bad that it didn't get the swift shot in the first time. Calistra, I got a natural 20. This is the look of a man that's has decided somebody's fate. It's too late for them. You don't know what he's doing, why his shield is glowing, and what's up with the angry box, but the angry box really doesn't seem to like being pointed at the three of you. It's making a lot more noise now than it did when it was up there, when he climbed up the thing. And he just calmly stands there, and this glow spreads wider and wider. What do you each do? Vex is incoherent. Practically incapacitated, but on his feet. But fall. At the rate this light is spreading, I don't know if it's a shield or something protective or some kind of magic or whatever, but you are literally in next to this guy. Calistra, he doesn't approach. He doesn't want to provoke. But he just calmly stands there. And the energy builds. Shaking his head at you guys and puts the angry box away. What do you do, Fafal? I don't know. I, 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 
honestly, I'm just going to keep standing there, just okay. confused. That's fine. I mean, what, what, why does he have this feeling of remorse? Like, I understand the feeling, but... You're just what? trying to... No, I get it. You're, you're trying to process too much going on, and yeah. the, the reading is the man's intent and actions. It's just kind of really throwing you off your game. Yeah. Callistra, sword drawn, warning him away. He stops. He doesn't advance. He doesn't look like he's going to attack. He just looks like he's waiting for something. You know magic. You know the world you come from. The shield is going to do something. But shields are usually used for defense. But draw are tricky. There are magical shields that trap weapons. That suddenly, like, when a man strikes at the opponent, he can't get his weapon back. There are shields that, you know, could explode. None of this makes sense. He puts his angry box away. You are there, sword drawn, warning him off. What do you do? I tell him to put the... He needs to drop the glowing shield and back away. SWAT team drove. Put the shield down! Put it down now! I mean, right now, <laughs> she, no, 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 no. she's furious. Yeah. She's not teammate anymore. She is... No, yeah, you're, you're doing your fire. job. You need to put it down now and back away or face Phrasma's wrath. Okay. I can give you an intimidate if you'd like. Yes, please. Natural 20. Natural 20. Okay. For a total of 26. The shield continues to glow brightly. And it reaches, it seems to like reach its peak. It doesn't get any brighter and it doesn't get any fuller. And he actually pulls it away from that guard position where it's pointing at you guys, but not pointing, he doesn't point it away. It's still at you, but he just kind of turns it out because it's a tower shield. He turns it out enough that you can see him and he raises a hand in a gesture of like, you know, wait, or you don't understand. And then suddenly you look over, you see the guards in that moment and pushing through them with a couple other acolytes, completely out of breath, frantic, frantic, frantic yelling at you guys is that lovely old scribe that you met at the dock, Calistra. And he's screaming at you guys. He says, You have to get down! <laughs> Gold. <laughs> Gold. I thought he was going to say get to the chopper. I knew when Frank killed his video that we, we were going to get something. It's just I was just waiting for it. It's like, he's not going to play into this. Oh, man. Um, run! run! He's waving his hands. You know, his hands over his head. Do me! Run! Gives him a look over her shoulder, but is still kind of looking at Vex. She's not entirely sure. She's like, this is a threat to her. Yeah. To, to her god, her goddess. She's yeah, like, yeah. I, I, you know, run to you. No, I don't know what's going on right now. Well, Arif just stumbles onto the scene, pushing through the guards with the clergy, right? And he doesn't say stop. <laughs> he just pushes through them and tells you guys to get out of there. That's strange. Anyway, Fafal. Callista looks and is confused and stands her ground. Ren is taking a beating and and goes down. Shield's still uh, glowing. Is, it, is there, are we like next to a building or is this kind of like an open courtyard? It's open. Like, there's okay. like 40, 50 feet away. Well, actually, sorry, about like 60 feet away is the gates. And then there's this fire. And all around it is like 30 odd feet of open sort of dirt. And then these pathways start and go off in every direction. You don't really okay. meet buildings until you hit 60 feet in any direction. Okay. Okay. Yes. It's okay. a horrible misunderstanding. Anyway, Arif, you tell them to run. They don't. The guards are looking to you and to the drove that's out there in the field, sword still ready to strike for. You know, like it's your call because it's their guy, you know. It's her party, so they would wait for her call or a superior like you that we could blame. Please let us shoot. We're very bored, um, you know, for taking the shot. So. <laughs> <laughs> she would she would throw her hand up to stop the, the volley of arrows oh. and look towards Ren and Fafal. Arif, what do you do? The guard's looking at you like, we shoot all of them? <laughs> kind of getting deeper into this scene now he's still waving his arms is, 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 stop what's going on what's wrong with you can't you look and, and, and listen okay. you there pointing at uh Calistra Calistra what's going on he defaced a monument he came down with this glowing shield and this angry screaming box since when do boxes scream it makes no sense anyway he was heading towards us and no, he needs to. They need to go away from the shield. Shields are not what they seem. <laughs> Why does this always happen? Um, and you know, Callistra defending that she's just doing her job. I feel like Fafal's only worry is that he needs three party members to 
<laughs> I, I think maybe. Right. <laughs> well, we're trying to go with a younger, more boisterous Fafal, and the future Fafal is shady as Fafal, as it were, and a bit jaded. So be careful that it's not us that jade him. Um, anyway. Fafal is Fafal. He's shady. He's never going to stop. I don't know what you're okay. talking about, my dear. Um, so uh, the paladin's not having any of this. Standing there, sword drawn, ordering him to stand down, and is now in NPC dom. Other NPC, Ryan is now mine for the moment. Just solemnly looking at them, sad eyes, shaking his head like they don't understand. And now, something very, very strange happens. The shield seems to reach its pinnacle and is about to. Tilting her head in a sorry gesture, the drow pulls back her sword like she's well ready to strike him down as opposed to suffer whatever strange magical effect. And then suddenly, off behind the android to one side, one word is shouted across the necropolis. Roxy! And suddenly, 250 pounds of cougar mountain lion pounce from 50 feet away, spearing tackle from behind the android and just knocked forward shield tower shield wide and stumbling forward onto the tro's sword now not point first but i imagine with that sword up he's probably taking some kind of leaning gash on the shoulder or if not into the face and bowling both of them over a cougar tackles ooh <laughs> natural 18 plus cmb tackles the android to the ground and begins well Shall we say mowing, chewing, but at least knocked him down. I've kept this suspended in rounds. So, with the paladin having to extract herself from the ground, or at least jump back so that she doesn't get pulled down, this cougar bearing the android down. We all turn surprised to see this creature, and with everyone prone, 60 feet behind, calmly walking towards, we see... What do we see, Ashley? We see me. <laughs> what do you look like? <laughs> I'm uh, about six feet tall. I'm definitely an elf. I don't hide it. Mm -hmm. um, I have armor that's, you know, leather. It's brown, uh, kind of fit like leaves laid over each other. Very, you know, natural. Very, you know, one with the earth of the elements. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very calm. She did exactly what I wanted her to do. Actually, I'm quite proud. I probably have a little bit of a smug look on my face as I gently. <laughs> do you have Roxy her. treats? This is like a Scooby Doo yeah, she, <laughs> exactly. get a Roxy <laughs> You know, she did what she was supposed to do. We've been working hard together on this to, you know, one word commands. Like, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't speak of many who can get their cougar to do things in one word. Well, actually, another druid with the uh, the, the training and the combat. But obviously, this is a given um, a straight up. Uh, and if there's if there's any doubt, I'll take that handle animal at plus four because you want her to attack and take him down. But what happens next? Getting him off, getting a cougar off a young man in his prime condition, that might be a little bit more difficult. Calmly walking towards the scene, a young, older, in her prime. How old is? I know elves live for hundreds of years, but comparable to a human, about I'm how old? Prime. Okay, I'd say I'm on the youngish end, and like still excited to get out an adventure, and I've not, you know, gotten annoyed yet. Okay, er me. early to mid twenties, comparably to a yeah. human, the hundred and change. I'd say I'm still excited. Okay, in, all up in your head to be here, <laughs> in okay. combat here. Here, here we are, calmly, Absolutely. calmly walking towards the scene. So, Arif, the situation is now getting worse as outside parties are influencing and attacking the scene, and you see this play out. H have you all gone mad? This is not supposed to take place here. It explore. You, you control that beast. You guards, do something. <laughs> the guards step up draw bows and start ordering everyone to disperse and stop. Ashley, your handle animal role, uh, what do you wish to do with it? Are you taking the old cleric's advice to like call her off or just telling her to, to pin him or hold fast or you have your own thing going on? Well, I'll happily call her off. I, okay. It wasn't my intention to cause any harm, just to calm what I was seeing escalating from far away. Okay. And what'd you roll? I rolled a four. Okay, now you get a natural plus four to handle animal as a druid, so that's eight. So Roxy ain't having it. Sorry. Roxy, <laughs> she's, so much she's, for my one word command. She yeah, can yeah. Do, but she, she makes her own mind. That's right. She jumps on, to, goes to town on him, and then she's just like, you know, just having a good old time there. Vex, 
is a little bit too ill and staggered to, you know, move around on his own. For fall, all this goes down. Luckily, although she jumps back, there's just that proverbial adjacent space where the paladin isn't like stepping back on you. Now, yeah, well, did on you... me and Vex, because I have right. Vex draped over my shoulder right now. Yeah, I was going to say, you had him sort of like up and trying to get him back out the gate or to help or something, and then all of a sudden... I, I, yeah, I was trying to get him out of the vomit and like partially away from this dude that was pointing a... looked like lighting up shield at him and therefore me. So. Okay. Well, you see a cougar like takes him down from behind, and they're both, you know, like prone kind of thing, and she initiates a grapple and tries to like it's kind of like going for the arm that's holding the shield because that's sort of like what's sort of cocked up and out from behind it's almost like you could see the elbow right off the shoulder from the front tower shield is very covering but from the back not only bowling down the whole mass straight forward and now we're kind of like laying on the shield straight down she's kind of got him by the left shoulder he's taking a bit of a slash from the right and trying to grapple you know pin him that kind of thing going on so Mission accomplished? Jeez, this guy doesn't look like he's getting up anytime soon. And Elvin Druid approaches at 60 feet, trying to call Roxy off, you know, <clears throat> a little embarrassed. Um, clerics arrive to back up the paladin, perhaps, yelling for everyone to stop. And, you know, maybe your paladin is a little bit overzealous. And what's going on here? Drawing a sword on him type of thing. Demanding the guard. The guards all take aim. And all of you guys are in a direct line of fire. I'm not saying, like, if they shoot at the prone target, they're going to hit you guys. But... The guards are set up like a firing line, and they have yeah. their spear, their shield, and they have like a bow. Um, and they had they well, went to are bow they or whatever. Behind us, so they're like at the gates. gate. They're at the gate, so okay. they're like broadside to you. So okay, thirty foot gates walk through, and about fifty feet, sixty feet in is the spire, and you guys are all like right in front of the spire, lined up left to right. So sort of left is you and Vex, then the dro with her right shoulder pointing at the gate facing east or facing down on the map um left shoulder towards the spire right face planted on his surfboard and cougar is the android and then calmly coming up from the bottom of the map or the east side walking while trying to command unsuccessfully her cougar okay breaking through the great gates is a line of eight guards and a couple clerics and this old man rapidly approaching staying about 40 feet away waving his arms around you know that kind of thing the guards switch from bows to spears and begin advancing like you know trying to move in circle and arrest what do you want to yeah. do? Well, this is the second time I've seen a cougar take down a man in 12 hours. Although the last time it did go a bit differently. <laughs> this time it was like 12 seconds. <laughs> Are you saying you and Vex had a um, <clears throat> an encounter with cougar at the bar tavern last night? <laughs> That's really bad. Something like that, <laughs> yes. All right. But no, um, no. So I, as, as the fall saying that, he's... Still kind of, he's going to drag Vex a little bit over, make okay. sure he's kind of good and just keep checking on him. Okay. Motion for one of the clerics, like, okay, kind of needs help. Yep. Um, so. Waiting for the guards first. A couple guards come your way, point spears and, you know, like kind of demand like a hands up kind of thing. Okay, so hands go up. I don't want one hand up. Yeah, Vex, Vex kind of slides a little bit. Now you're kind of holding him like he's bowled over in half. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like this kind of thing. <laughs> Puke starts coming out again. Um, the android doesn't say anything. He's just thrashing about, trying to get up, trying to use strength checks and, you know, in the grapple, trying to get Roxy off of him. Okay. Arif is approaching the scene. The guards also approach the paladin and the android. Okay. Um, the paladin turns her sword on the new threat. She does not attack the cougar, but she's in a guarded position waiting for the guards to assist. Defensive stance. The guards come up and they're treating Roxy and the paladin and, you know, the android is like the proverbial hostile. So as the guards break through the clerics and the old man to circle you guys, Ashley, you're coming up to the guard line and your sweet Roxy is surrounded by spears and acting very aggressively. This may not end well. What do you do? Reach out. And, and calm, as calmly as I can explain. Okay. She's she's with me. Everything's okay. <laughs> okay. She's doing what I asked her to do. And I just need her to have some space so she can calm down and we can back off of her. Okay. So the end guard is looking over at you nodding. Two guards are watching. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Android's flailing away. <laughs> It's it's the sight we see the cougar just going to town on this android that's you know not really selling your story. Uh, did you want to try and call her off again? Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. Again, Roxy, Roxy, stand down. Okay. 
Get her to heal. You have the heal trait, yeah. the, the heal ability here. Uh, I should. Yep. And you've got, add four to your roll there. Uh, so 13 plus four, 17. Yes. Okay. So, um, rip, 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 roll, 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 fun, fun, fun. You know, try, trying to get the android. The android's, he's, luckily he's covered in metal and a lot of these claws aren't really getting to bear. He's got his arms up in front of his face and he's trying to, he's let go of the shield and kind of flipped over trying to roll with this cat. And then all of a sudden she just kind of like does the side cat thing. You scare your, spook your cat thing. She just kind of like pushes off sideways and, you know, rip and goes wide around like towards the spire out of the guards and, you know, comes to your side. Arif. Guards well, are... seeing that, you know, guards are pointing weapons, the fat cats finally um, stepped off the one guy. I'll uh, move over to Vex, kind of help him yep. stand up, and then look towards the rest of the crowd. Those the, those tokens that allow you access here, those can be rescinded. Yes. Uh, uh, behave yourselves. This is not the place for infighting. You have dungeons to look at and explore. Go okay. that way. At the oh. word rescinded, the drow paladin steps forward, puts one foot on the android shield, and lays her sword down, you know, towards his neck, like, you know, telling him, basically showing him that he'd better give up. The android, really weirdly, this man, this pale man, okay, just pushes his head backwards in the sand. And it's not like a human can't do this. It's just kind of a weird thing to do, where he arches his shoulders and back, tilts his head all the way back so he can see Vex, Aiden, Old Man Era, you know, the original target, and confirms that they're there. And then he just relaxes and nods and puts his hands up and surrenders himself to the guard. They pat him down, they take his sword, they take his shield at arm's length. Or so the paladin picks up the shield. Um, and she demands that he has his ticket revoked because he desecrated the spire. And with a warning to the rest of you that this could happen as well, they take the pale man and with a couple, one cleric and two guards that will listen to her, they march him off and he just mumbles something and asks about the customs of a fair trial. And remember his linguistics roll? Uh, it's not really working in his favor. He rolls so low, he's just bumbling at something about, you know, being arrested or a trial, you know. Do I recognize this language at all that he's trying to speak in? He's trying to speak Osirian. He's trying to speak in our language. Okay. Uh, whatever he calls common, galactic common, whatever, isn't really common here. So he's trying to address us in, in what little snippets of the language he's gleaned in the last 24 hours. So what we do is we have him make a language roll based on a d20, 5% per. So I got him at 20%. So uh, what are your customs here on a fair trial for myself? I will comply. Comes out as only 20% of that message is getting across. So like I said, he's bumbling on about laws and trials and, you know. But he's okay. trying, in a very strange accent, he is trying to speak your language. The man is insufferably pale. Like, even the the sort of rustic, wind-scorched Ulfin men have sort of a tan. To, the guy's skin is just, not translucent, but just strangely really, really pale. Almost like that of an elf. But he is obviously human. Average height, around six foot, good build. Very, 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 very high-quality looking masterwork banded male. The Droll Paladin tentatively picks up the shield and gets him arrested and they march him off there. Now they're going to come back to the temple, the mausoleum, the grand mausoleum of Phrasma, and they'll probably go out to the wing where the voices of the spire, the military, you know what I mean? And deal with them there. So you kind of know where she's going. She was in your okay. vision. You know, you'll know where to find her. Your immediate problem is the druid, the cougar, and the sick man, and the strange sylph. The guards just, you know, just tell them to surrender or give up, but they're, the paladins kind of like got her guy and ran off. So now they kind of turn to you, and the other acolytes about what to do with, what do you want to do? So I'll, you know, kind of help Vex stand a little bit if he's capable. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, is this one with you? Who does he belong to? Which, uh, which group? Well, sir, he, he does belong with our group, the, uh, the, well, the paladin. And <laughs> the Night Whispers, I believe is the name you're looking for. <laughs> yes. uh, we, uh, we were all a part of the Night Whispers. Um, I... As we approached the spire, that one started climbing. She got agitated for some reason. I don't know. And then this one started vomiting black sludge and put his arms in it, and it started crawling up his arms. So I poured water on it and pulled him away from it because, yeah, and now he's missing a hand where he had one before. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. Uh, so I'd like to uh, take a look at Vex and see if I can make a heal check to see if I understand yep. why he's 
what's going on, any any of that kind of yep. stuff. Yep, do the paramedic thing on the scene, assess before you move them or before, you know, yep. take them Triage out. Triage time. Well, yeah. the, last, the last thing you'd want to do is take a curse back into the living city. Right? Right? It's part of your responsibility. So the man's doing triage right on the spot. I right. mean, uh, at first, I thought it was just a hangover from... Cause we went out drinking last night. You could not hold this liquor. Okay. But it was kind of more extreme than that. All right, so uh, I got a 17 on the die, so it gives me a 26 for my heel check. Okay. Um, Kaida. Roxy, knowing she's been bad, kind of gets behind you, but like ears down, slinks away. You know, you're dealing with people, so she kind of half slinks back. She's within 30 feet, but she slinks away towards your own party. You know, because she, she didn't... You didn't call her off like she didn't get off as quick for her fun to end so she kind of she knows she's been bad she kind of slinks away you know um what are you doing i'm watching okay and can i have a diplomacy um, check so that they you know the guards just don't kind of lump you in attacking another party is against the rules and technically if you're responsible for your companion this is what you've done <laughs> i'm afraid of what this is gonna be <laughs> what's your plus to your diplomacy negative two. Oh, so your 12 becomes a 10 yeah. Okay. So let's have a spiel of uh, <clears throat> what your elven character would say in in common about uh, uh, helping the church, helping the guard. Like you know, what's your? You told the cougar to attack. The cougar was more than happy, but it's kind of on you. So what's your uh, ten? Uh, you know, what's your excuse here? Because the guards want to know why you interfered. Do you know these people? You know what? What? Uh, let's see your ticket. You know, are you supposed to be here? You're pointing back at your adventuring party. Your leader is back there face planting. Uh, the party rogue over there is laughing his ass off. Your cat's looking all, mmm, I'm sorry, you know, that kind of thing. Like, do you identify yourself? Show your ticket. But what's your, you know, let's have your diplomacy here. Yeah. Um, so honestly, I'm with that party over there and I point and they all notice me pointing and kind of turn away. And I shrug my shoulders. And uh, I was, we were, we were heading forward, but I could hear a commotion and something just didn't seem right. And, you know, I've traveled enough to know that this just wasn't normal. And so I held back to, to keep watch. And I noticed that, you know, maybe someone in, was being wrongfully accused and there were swords pulled and I just wasn't sure it was going to happen. And so quickly to just subdue the person that might've been in the wrong, but may not have been, I just, I had Roxy just put him on the ground and then you know what else happened you all you all came through like i just something just wasn't right and i just didn't want someone to be wrongfully accused of something or hurt um in in this you know this wonderful place of you know tranquility okay, okay. so you identify yourself as a druid of the green you produce credentials that you are uh, you do have the stake and claim you know um the uh the laughing rogue your party isn't even approaching to back you up you know, you're all kind of like just met, put together kind of thing at the last minute as well, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the laughing rogue, you know, yells, still chuckling the, the party name. It's like, we're the Scarab Four! <laughs> and he's giving you the thumbs up, like, best of luck, honey. You know, that kind of shit. There being absolutely no help. There's five of us. Hmm? No. They, don't, they don't count Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't count. They, you know, you're like five, you know. Cat glares at them, you know. Um... And this is going down, and you're like, this is this and this and this. Anyway, uh, DC of 10 as a normal check. The instigator's been arrested. A senior cleric is sort of taking control so that their their sergeant doesn't have to, you know. And the sergeant's more interested about what the church wants to do. This whole lottery, this whole area is sort of like church domain. So the sergeant is kind of taking the lead from old man Arif. Um, the guy you're talking to is listening, just kind of looking at you. Um, do you speak Osirian? Or are you just kind of getting this across as common? Mm. Not that these guys don't speak common, but you know what I mean? Talking to locals in their own language. Okay. Speaking to locals in their own language would be a little helpful. Okay. So you're breaking it down in common. You know, uh, thank God we don't have to go to your Sylvan and go with interpretive dance. Um, thanks. To- <laughs> um, I could draw it out in the sand. And, and lay it out for them. So with a DC 10, I'm going to say that they just kind of like, they explain to you that there, the laws here are different. You have to follow the rules. You know, don't interfere. Um, it's like a cop. There's this good civilians who are like, police, you know, and the cop's like, hey, stand down. We'll, you know, this is our job. You know, warning. don't interfere. Yeah. Uh, I don't say you got 15. We let you off with a warning. But what they do do is while one's bitching at you what you did wrong, another one comes over to the sergeant who's standing next to Arif, who's trying to do a heel check, and they want to ask the cleric. So you're kind of like, hang on, let me talk to my supervisor and deciding if they're going to let you off with a warning or charge you. So you're kind of pending. Back to old man Arif with a heel check of 26. 
Uh, the boy is in good shape. He has suffered the sickened condition. Something has made him violently ill. You're not sure what the hell's coming out of him. That pool over there looks mostly comprised of bile, but it does have a bluish black uh, inky, you know, this is not right. No, what the hell this boy drank. Um, as far as physical condition goes, uh, he's missing a hand and his arms, the stump and his other hand are stained with this black inky stuff. The self city washed it off. So what's left is like the henna stain. You check the hand, it actually is completely healed over. It's not like a wound that he suffered recently. It's a very old wound. Um, You can identify him as uh, he's either human or like from the region, uh, that kind of thing, if you're interested. But um, it's a stomach pump situation. It's not a cure light wound situation. You know what I'm saying? The guy, you can maybe do something to bolster his fortitude save, but he's kind of on his own. His own system is rejecting a substance, and besides you trying to do something like give him water or or salt to make him throw up more, or you know what I mean, some healing check kind of things. Magic. It's more, it's more like an allergic reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to like just a spell. However, uh, if you want to try something here or take him back to the temple, um, more healing checks. Mm-hmm. Um. This man is in no condition to continue. It would surely spell his doom. Uh, you there, got, and you there, got. Uh, grab him. Let's take him back to the temple and see what uh, what aids we can give to him. Uh, nothing can be done here. For fall to your horror, you're twenty feet into a gold mine, and your party dissolves before you. One's a cop, and arrests <laughs> another member. Leaves. A cleric demands that the guy that you're trying to prop up. No, there's still two of us. We're still good. He's still good. Come on, man. Come on. This, we're down to two. Minimum's three. Hey, Truid, you want to join us? You no, know, this kind of shit. And the old man calls it, and your party falls apart, and you're left there. Everyone's leaving. Do you go with or one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to be a party of three to enter the lottery and go in. There's no rule saying like, oh my god, we lost Jenkins, we're down to two, do we back out? That's up to the guy. Like, three to get in the gate. Three to get on this ride, you know what I'm saying? If somebody like... I'm t- in yeah. the gate, yeah. Yeah, you want to stay in here and just go it alone? Well, I'm, it's how I've done things before. Okay. Well, why not? Let's do it. You want to you go scope out uh, the proverbial, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll at least give it a good look over. All right. Hey, you don't have to worry about splitting the party. That's right. If there's only one of you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or you really have to worry about it then. Okay. <gasps> Left. So, <laughs> old man Arif is trying to take the party away, and the sergeant, you know, intercedes, and they they help you, Arif. But he says, "And what do you? What about this one, um, father?" And we're talking about Fafal. No, the druid. Talking about and me. the cat. Oh. It's obvious what he's indicating is because they they kind of broke with the rules where another party legally illegally attacked another party for whatever reason. That's a no no. She says she well, was I'm, just trying to help us do our job, but it's kind of the church's domain. Father, how would you like to handle her and the cat? Yeah. I'm standing looking as innocent as possible. Yep. Bluff check. Uh, <laughs> Bluff check. Rocking back and forth on my foot. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to the big city before. You know. This is all so much in YouTube. Yeah, really. I'm just kind of taking it all in at this point. I'm okay. looking at this group that's kind of disavowing the druid. They're all, no, 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 no. and the rogues all, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> They're just a bunch of dicks that aren't really helping her. You know, um, she's with us, but we, you know, her actions don't reflect on our party. They're kind of making that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Don't kick us out. What do you want to do? Um, Eris is like, I don't have time to deal with the foolishness of adventures. Um, if you two want to t- tear yourselves apart, Go farther in, so we can't see you. Um, and, and, and next time, control that beast. Lords, <laughs> it's dangerous. Cat's ears go up, almost recognizing what you said. It's like time to make an exit, and the cat just kind of ears go up and whoop, and just kind of boop, 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 you know towards the adventuring party. Like I'm making myself scarce. You're the man. Shh, gone. So Arif, going with the guards back to the mausoleum, dealing with your patient, all this kind of stuff. Um, I think if that's the direction I need to be going, then yeah. Well, you said the man's done. Yeah, I mean, it, it It doesn't look to me like he can be doing a whole lot more. I mean, he's sickened. He's lost a hand. He right. needs some kind of probably one of the better ones at it at this True. point. So as the uh, the guards kind of gather him up, I'll uh, look at one of the guards and say, um, t- take him to the Church of Phrasma. I'll join. I'll, I'll be with you shortly. I'll turn looking to Fafal. I, I don't understand what, what faith this man follows, but... I think I need to keep him under close surveillance. This 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 illness that he's exhi- exhibiting, I don't want it to go any farther. Um, so you'll know where to find me if it comes to it. 
That's true. You if know, the man is cursed or something, Phrasma does have jurisdiction over the other temples here inside. You know, you can pull that kind of rank out, I'm sure. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so as they start to haul him off, I'll slowly follow with him, just kind of making a careful note of the people that I see around him. Okay. I've got my eyes on you. And you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, because I had that dream that, that kind of inspired me to come here, so I do want to remember these people. Yes. Because it... it be important later on but definitely um taking the suli and keeping him kind of under thumb okay so a visual profile mental notes on everyone especially third guard from the left he's kind of shifty looking um back to our druid uh, i believe is it no more than two diplomacy in a day or is it one up i can't remember i think it's like um if, if, if you're using diplomacy to like actually influence somebody it takes a minute but if you're just trying to bs your way out you can diplomance no, I was thinking just about how, how many attempts, how many times can you d- diplomance a guy in a day? Is it just once, or is it? I think you get two, don't you? Usually, it's one time per subject. Yeah, yeah, okay. So sticking sticking to your um, yeah, and if you're trying to touch on it on the same subject, yeah, I think it's. I think I was going to say if you're going to try to use the same subject, then you would try to default to a different skill, like diplomacy yeah. first, then yeah. bluff, then intimidate, then you're in jail. Yeah, yeah. So oh, before we yeah. suggest that to Ashley, sorry, go ahead, Aiden. Oh, uh, I was just going to say, you cannot use diplomacy to influence a given creature's attitude more than once in a 24-hour period. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so Ashley, your options are luck of the draw. The guard still, st- this cleric that they default to doesn't really help and doesn't care. So they're still mulling over, um, you know, your diplomacy. Now, to staying out of meta, your character does as best she can, but would it be in character for you to switch gears and go to intimidate or bluff or just hold out for diplomacy because that is your way? Or I wouldn't intimidate. Run. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> thanks for cool. Great, hands yeah. up in the air. And just start bagging back away. Towards my original party that is apparently like giving me up and yeah. deal with that on my own. So, okay. Fafal is going to start walking up behind the guards quietly mm-hmm. and drape an arm around either shoulder. Just, my good men, what is going on? Why are you still holding this this beautiful woman here? She has done nothing wrong. She assisted in taking down that I don't want to say madman but the the large fellow without bloodshed now albeit the cougar was a little aggressive but come on gentlemen she was helping it's fine okay look I speak for the party that everybody was involved with and we're okay with her sticking her cougar on us it's fine so don't worry about it, guys. Relax. All right, all right. All right. So if you guys were partied up, like you said, I, we'd call this an aid another role, diplomacy, Aiden. Um, but like you said, since you literally oh, no, are, I'm bluffing this. Okay, bluff. <laughs> well, that's the truth. <laughs> I guess the lie comes in the we're all fine about getting attacked. Yeah, but exactly. since you are, yeah, since you are the sort of defendant in this court case, then yeah, I'll let it be its own role. So bluff check to convince the guards that. Your your side of the uh, <clears throat> allocation, yeah. <laughs> I'll join your party. We could be a party of three. <laughs> okay, I could, Jeff. I could slowly see Fafal having his token in his hand. It's a shame I have a token and the gods don't. So nah. have- <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. Now I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay, actually, never mind. This doesn't apply. Never mind. Now I want another question. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so I got a nineteen on the die for a twenty-five on my bluff check. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> so um one guard is like two fingers on your wrist and just kind of taking your hand off his shoulder because you're being a little bit uh you know personal space chummy and just looks at you um the other one's just kind of nodding right and yeah sarge you know in osirian yeah sorry sarge, sarge is just kind of like fine let's just get back to work you know and the sarge leaves and the one guy you're still wrapped around is like you know call me i actually do get a plus one to that roll against him Okay, um, and the uh, female guard that like just kind of like hands off me, right? Yeah, just kind of leans in as they walk away. Me too. You call me too. You know, they just walk off. <clears throat> he is pretty. Um, they start talking about a blue alien from Mass Effect you could date, and you're the closest thing they're going to get. So they, you know, but they go back to work. They go back in line. Arif takes everybody back to the church. Kaida, <laughs> you're left standing alone in front of the Phrasmic Spire. You know. Um, <laughs> I blame so you for much trouble at this yeah. stage. <laughs> You're like 20 feet in here. It's like all this shit going down. Um, do you return to your own party? 
and your day? Uh, no. It's, yeah, they didn't really stand by you, did they? I feel quite betrayed. I <laughs> yeah. mean, yeah, yeah. You know, we may have been like put together just by luck of the dice, but okay. still, we agreed to help have each other's back. Um, All right. So, if they're not going to look out for you it, it, with a minor altercation with the guards, how well do you think you're going to fare with them when the trouble? Yeah, goes? seriously. Yeah. Okay. When I'm dealing with like whatever undead might be out there, because I've heard things. All right. So, um, well, what are you going to do then? Roxy's with know, them. Uh, Roxy's with them. I call her back. She okay. knows. Just, okay. You know, a light whistle in the air. Okay. I'm going to make your roll. A plus four. <laughs> I'm going to make your roll. <laughs> she doesn't show up. I'm buying a new cougar. 18. Yeah. Uh, there right. should actually be an additional plus two to that because you have a plus two to your handle animal. So it's plus I thought four it, plus I thought two? It, I thought it was four for being a druid. Well, it, it is, but she has a natural plus two. Four. So like she, so her skill total is plus two for handle animal. Then there's the additional plus four for being a druid with her animal companion. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, so plus six. Right. So right. dog on the street plus two. Your personal companion plus six. Got it. Yeah. Twenty. Okay. She hops to comes right over. All right. It's the one thing you do know how to follow. Just looking at you innocently. Just looking at her like. Yep. Just looking at paw, rubbing in the air. I have no idea what you're talking about, lady. Deep <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, your party now that the guards have dispersed are kind of like wandering off, looking back at you. The, the rogues like you coming. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Just wave at them. Whatever, <laughs> you know, inappropriate gesture of this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So now what? You quit your party. The Scarab 4, now the Scarab 3. Take it, you, take it in hand. What do you want to do? You want to go? You can rejoin the lottery. Maybe pick up a party that's coming out after their day that might have suffered a loss, you know? Is, uh... Sorry, Aiden, I can't remember your character's name. Fafal. Fafal? I'm offended, my dear. I'm sorry. Are you still in front of me? No, he's... Yes, he's, I am. He's, I'm he's over, right here. He's over there. He's like the guard. He's talking to these two guards, and he's like giving personal information and pointing oh, at the point of town where he's staying, and they're like smiling at him, and you know. Not exactly sure if I want to like... <laughs> but I do have the best wing woman, so... Yeah? I, I approach... Okay, so yeah. like maybe apologies to the party attacked, and the, you know these yeah. guys. These guys really looked out for each other, even though they're divided down the middle. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, your party may have betrayed you, but it did not attack itself. <laughs> so you're sure this is not a downgrade? <laughs> no, he was. You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking this man doesn't know me, and obviously he went out on a limb to speak to my defense. That's true. And um, my own my own party couldn't be bothered. You know. Yeah, freaking rogues right. laughing at me, backing away, giving yep. me air guns. Like, come on, man! <laughs> finger guns. Yeah, giving you the finger guns. You got this. <laughs> you're screwed now. Yeah, you got this. We're, we have confidence in you. You're screwed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, so, so you you roll up on Fafal. Let's hear it. <laughs> Just wanted to thank you, Fafal. You said that was your name. I'm sorry. I, I only heard it, like in the in the breeze. Oh, he puts it. He caps all the sentences with it. You're like uh, Jason Derulo. Constantly really. referring to himself in the third person. He's I one of those guys. <laughs> I, can, a, I can roll with that. That's, he's got a business good. card, Rogue for Hire. And if you flip it over <laughs> and it's... role play my character. <laughs> sorry, <there>. sorry. <laughs> I want to talk about the back of your card. Your night service is also available. You know, just kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Find me anywhere the wind blows. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, All right. Yeah, that's so, oddly accurate. That, cause that was good. good. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. No, she's quick, man. Just you know, <laughs> no, she's a little rusty in playing, but she's good. We wouldn't have brought Ashley on if she, you know, she'd warm up to you quick. I'm sorry. Please, by I'm all sorry. means, the, you know, the sun is climbing. You know, they're left alone in front of this the spire of Phrasma. Two wayward party members meet, one offering apology, one very smug with himself of how at least his bluffing skills came in handy at the very end to help somebody. You know, your party's leaving through the gate. Druid, your party's heading off to their stake and claim. What do you do? Perfect. Kaida. I remembered your name. Thank you. So I just wanted to say, Fafal, that uh, I really appreciate you standing up for me back, you know, here. Not even back there, but here. And, uh, you know, you don't even know me. And I just, you know, that really touches me. And I can see you staring off, you know, looking for treasure and I'm looking for adventure. So I think that, you know, you, myself and my friend here, we could, maybe we could team up. And like I said, I'm not really after treasure. I'm just after adventure. So I think that works in our favor and we could have each other's back. Roxy is already like swinging around and that sort of low combat. I'm going to flank him 
but is really, really tight and kind of rubbing the back of your legs kind of thing. It's a little unsettling. Wait, this, my, my legs or her yeah, legs? No, yours, yours. Like, <laughs> at, at the mention of, a mention of the cat, you look down and there's no cat there, and the cat is already doing that circle to get behind you to pounce kind of combat, you know, look, looking yeah. at you like a predator looks at prey. And then it gets into that position behind you and then comes forward. But instead of like lining up the flank, kind of comes wide and just kind of brushes Does up against your leg. Scent yeah. rub against yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like how a shark nudges something nice. before it attacks, you know, this kind of thing. And then comes back around to her side. It's kind of looking at you. Even she trusts you. And I mean, I haven't seen her do that in a while. So obviously there's, you know, I think it would be in our best interest. Plus, you just lost your party. party and well, we all know what happened to mine. Cat's just course, looking at you. Sorry. Cat's just looking at <laughs> you. Just, <laughs> I'm just going to put my hand on top of <laughs> Cat's just like, down. how you doing? Just, <laughs> I'm the bigger cat. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. You do make some very good points. I do seem to be lacking some support. And your group seems to be filled with assholes, to be frank. Um, so... Don't be Frank, be Aiden. <laughs> there can be Sorry, <laughs> that. I finally got him cleared up so he's got his thoughts clear to role play and you break it. Good for you, Matt. Force point. All right, go on. <laughs> I told you I wouldn't mess with you in this game, Aiden, but I didn't say nobody else would. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. No, I, I, I do think that is a wonderful idea. I, well, yes, I am very much interested in the treasure. It, it's more than that. I'm interested in the hunt. Ears go up. <laughs> Sorry. Be careful what words you use. <laughs> there are trigger words with her, and I will teach them to you. Yeah. But that word, the H word, and I cover her ears. Don't. <laughs> we don't use the H word around my cougar. Gets her going. Oh, my dear. That is going to be quite difficult. Because, <laughs> like her, I am a predator. Oh, it is. I so start much. second thinking, second guessing. <laughs> yeah. I already I deal with my predator on the regular. What? What kind of predator do you do you mean? No, uh, I'll I'll kneel down and hold my hand out, you know. And if she comes in, I'll give her, you know, scratch underneath the chin and then behind the ears. Well, she she had her inspection on her own terms. Now she's at master's side, being pushed down on the head <laughs> by the cat, by the druid. You know, I just said you're standing there with, at a, at at a glance, ears. you know, just like fingertips, you know, yeah, just to, securely in there. They're like. Yeah, I'm still the bigger cat there, Roxy. And like, the scene the scene pulls out, making these two, three figures, you know, discussing the possible alliance, one joining the other party, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, pulling up, up, up over the city of Wati, over the gates, south, and then down, down over top of the Grand Mausoleum to the infirmary, where laid out, Amongst cots, prepared for obvious combat and monsters attacking, the church of many, there's several churches here, have, you know, they're set up to receive wounded and charged to the nose for it. Old man Arif, your acolytes and some of the guards, bring in two wounded. The paladin is happy that the guy is under guard and, you know, m- go- wanders off mumbling something about this whole thing about her adventuring inside and being on that list is a bad idea. And apparently she has a bone to pick with a superior and marches off and leaves them in your care. The android, really not, um, like I said, his language isn't really helping him at the moment, is compliant and sits there and receives aid and is getting bandaged up. He's weaponless and they start trying to like the acolytes are trying to take off his armor so he actually sort of is pointing and assisting so they can get the torso off and again um a prime male physical specimen in his mid to late 20s um but the skin itself he just he's not from the lands of the sun the guy's just you know just kind of palish not sickly looking but just unusually you know his pigment of skin is just hasn't seen a lot of sun um his actual face is a little pink like sunburnish now that he's you know been exposed for a day or two compared to the rest of them they strip him down to the waist ask him where it hurts you know he points at the shoulder where he leaned in on that sword a little bit and there's a little you know some cuts, cuts and scratches and bruises or whatever and he lets himself gain aid a couple beds away though you also notice Arif kind of a perception check uh yeah uh 19 that he keeps nervously glancing over to where the second patient is the the one-handed young Suli. And he's asking acolytes about his condition. And 
um, with his, you know, garbled common, uh, you think he's asking something about like the Suli's condition is far worse than you guys understand. And he should be quarantined. He should be isolated. He's dangerous. And you, but you do get the idea that it's not like the man is dangerous. Whatever's happening to him is dangerous. You know, his disease or whatever is dangerous. Oh, that certainly catches my attention. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to the other acolytes. Uh, Yes. Take that one back to a different chamber, a private chamber. Let's see if we can't uh, figure out what's going on with him. Mm. Um, you there, you seem to know quite a bit more than you're letting on to. And I'll sit down next to, uh, and, and try to have a, a conversation or try to learn his particular vernacular, see if we can communicate a little bit better. Okay. And I'll kind of walk through the languages that I know to see if something kind of strikes a, a more familiar chord. Okay. Funny enough, you think for someone who keeps ordering your acolytes aloud and going, get him out of here, he's dangerous, or, or maybe that was not his complete message. Now that you've turned your attention to him, right? Uh, he clams up and is, you know, very surprised that you're taking that much interest in him and isn't suddenly very, not very talkative at all. And he asks for what you would call a barrister until his trial, you know, till the legal proceedings of the actions that he took, which were illegal within your city, he would like representation and he's asking for a barrister before he'll talk to you about anything he knows. Uh, can I try to diplomance him just a little bit? Sure. Okay. Let's see how well I can do here. 25. Okay. No, no, no. Come now. And anything you say to me will be kept purely confidential. And and, 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 and trust me, um, I'm just looking out for the welfare of everyone involved. The, the, the laws and customs, they all have their place. But in these halls, I seek only to help. He only really admits to one thing, and that is he is, and his gear, are uniquely equipped to deal with what is wrong with the young man in the other room. And everything is sort of like a misunderstanding, though he can't explain to you how and why, but he wants you to trust in the fact that like his actions were warranted and he is uniquely equipped his magic, as it were, to deal with what's wrong with him. If you would merely return his shield to him, he could cure him quite quickly. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm afraid that's not going to happen. Um, I'll put my hand on his shoulder. Okay. Respect trust is something best earned. If, if you don't uh, feel free to, to place it within me, then I believe I'll have to go have a talk with the other chap and, and see if he's a little more forth. He's compliant. He understands. And again, he requests that his gear not be inspected or damaged under the laws of the city that he's already learned. And he asks to have personal representation from a barrister that he's willing to pay for somehow. And that's about all you get out of him from this point on. Well, I'm sure that messenger that goes to, a, to a, a get your representation will be as slow as needed for me to get my investigations done. And I'll kind of get up and move on. Okay. He just kind of cocks his head at you like, did you just say what I think you say? Like, uh? you know, you also know that what you're saying to him also is kind of, he's trying to grasp, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it goes two ways. Not only, it's not like he understands you guys perfectly. Maybe I should make this more clear. It's not like he understands or is here perfectly and has trouble saying it back to you. He's reading and talking as he sees and reads the situation. You know what I mean? So I'm trying not to meta so much that he has exact knowledge of everything you're saying. He's more trying to read your intent. You know, I mean, it's obvious a wise old man comes who seems to have seniority, sits down, starts and grilling him for what is going on in his ass. You know, so he lo- wants to lawyer up. Anyway, old man Arif, moving yeah, on yeah, to the next next patient. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll head over to, uh, I, I believe I caught his name as Vex. Yep. Yes. Um. So is he still sickened? I mean... What's his condition? Do a, okay. do a quick check on him. It's probably been five, ten minutes now since he's been drug in and laid down. Mm-hmm. He's handless. What's that hand doing? Is it walking off on its own? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no, he's 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 missing yeah. a hand. It wasn't like lying on the ground. I'm saying that the 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 man only has one. He's amputee. He only has oh, one gotcha. hand. Gotcha. And when you inspected the wound, it had nothing to do with the ink or whatever. That's an old wound, you know. Would probably make you suspect that he possibly had a, um, you know, a little bit of theft history in his past because that's the penalty is chopping off a hand in the city. You know what I mean? He might have stole something. Well, well we all make mistakes. Hopefully we learn from oh, it. Or he could have been, you know, it could be leprosy or something and the guy took drastic measures. Who knows? Um, so let's have that healing check. All right. Let's see here. And well. 19. You start fussing over him. The man is unconscious and start digging deeper. Now you're in your element. You're in an infirmary. You have the beck and call um, with other clerics dispersed 
and the lottery and everything going on, we're so shorthanded that they're quite happy for you to just kind of flash your credentials and say, you know, this is my patient. I'm going to take the lead on this kind of thing because we're comparatively shorthanded. Uh, and everyone's bracing for the first wave of injuries to come out of that necropolis. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to them? Well, you know, oh, a bunch of people are interested. Oh, what happened? Can we help? No, no, no. You know, they got this. You know. He's cursed. You know, let's take a step back. But the scene comes down along his homespun robes, down to his Jesus sandals, to the bottom of the cot. And you see, zooming in a macro sense, the man's sweat, the man's natural fluids laying upon the bed he's been put on. And in this macro sense, zooming Ant-Man style across the floor, you see droplets tracing back to the first room where the man was laid, where Android Requisition R3N is also being treated. The camera comes up to the cot where Vex Vanda was originally laid and zooms in, in, in to a microscopic sense where we see strange box-like moving creatures at a microscopic sense riding in a fluid and moving at what's probably a snail's pace in the real world, but a small army of one, ten, one hundred, one hundred thousand microscopic things exiting or moving with a liquid sweat stain from Vex along the bed, down a cot leg, across the floor, and towards requisition droid R3N. The Great River Sphinx, the heart of Assyrian. Life in both ancient and modern times is embodied in the snake goddess Wajet, who is said to dwell in the Afghanistan. No, that's that's awesome. That was, that, was so, uh, that was so awesome. And we <laughs> run along the river, you know, robbing, I mean, healing poor travelers of their, you know, no. Pirates, definitely. marshes. That, sure, why not? Okay. I mean, different voices. Yeah, just keep going. And that was how you say it, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Wajet is a patron of pharaohs and the racists. Who are racist, and the Uracis <laughs> is. <laughs> Why Jet is a racist goddess? <laughs> Sorry, no, it's good. good. Keep going. Wajet is a patron of pharaohs and the Erasis, and part of the royal regal of Osirian. 